Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everybody. How's y'all's Wednesday treating you? Pretty good. Good. Just been gaming, you know how it be. Yeah, yeah. I've been working all day. Got off my work call at like 3.57. Stood up for two minutes and now I'm back to sitting in my chair again. Trying to make sure I got all my stuff set up right this time. Hey, can I ask you a question about the Amazon setup? Sure. Um, I I went through all the steps and I don't know if I if I missed anything, but whenever I try to SSH, it just says permission denied. After um, after doing everything, is that is that because um, the the what what do they call it the like when I do my my IP address, I typed in like the wrong thing. Is that you think that's what it is? If it's if it if it were a security group, you would get something security like uh, it, it wouldn't be security group because that would be like refused or timed out. Um, if you're getting denied, are you getting something about your warning PIM file is too? No, open? it's not that. I changed that. I did the the ch whatever six hundred to it, um, and that went and that went away. And then after that, it just says permission denied. Oh, what username are you using? Ubuntu at? Yeah, I use the pretty much the same line that you used, except with the name of my key. Hmm. Does it say rejected on port twenty-two? No, it literally just says permission denied. That's it. No. Well, that should work unless you didn't make an Ubuntu instance by maybe you made an Amazon instance accidentally. I I clicked. I definitely clicked the uh, the one, but I'll, I'll check and make sure. And just make sure that you know the you got the right PIM file. Maybe you're using a, the wrong one or something when you assigned a PIM file at the end. I don't know. That's the only th other thing I can think of. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, portal fan. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe username needs to be like just make sure it's all lowercase U B U N T U just to be sure there. Um, get a beanbag chair. <laughs> I already had like a meeting from two to three that I had no input on at all and definitely like woke up 20 minutes into that meeting. So, uh, yeah, my, I don't need a more comfortable chair. All right. Um, any other questions? Do y'all have? Were y'all able to get through all of the AWS stuff that I was able to get through? Yeah, uh, Monday, yesterday, whatever day it was, last class. Cool. Yeah, if you're using WSL, uh, chmod may work, but you may have to copy it into your directory. But if it were a chmod not working problem then you would end up with still having the uh, secure, you know, warning PIM files to open kind of thing. So it's probably not that. <clears throat> if you have to do Windows security stuff, that would probably not let you even connect. Um, little confused about VPC routing. All right, let me get back into that. Let me get my OBS spun up. Browser. Windowed projection. Pull this over here and share that. Okay. <clears throat> and let me pop out chat again because that goes away. Where'd it go? Oh, there we go. 
Okay, so let's log into AWS console. I was about to say, really? Is it going to just let me back in? No. Okay. Get my authenticator thing going here. <clears throat> All right. So VPC, let's take a look at what we did. We got two, well, I got two VPCs. You should probably only have one, but if we look at this, it's got a route table in it. So uh, the first thing we did was we added an internet gateway to our VPC. So if we go back and look at this, uh, it does not show any internet gateways here, but if we go look at our internet gateways, we will see that we have one named CPSC and it's attached and it's attached to our CPSC gateway. So that's good. And that's the first half. So the internet gateway allows you to talk into your VPC. So even though your EC2 instance has a public IP address assigned, without an internet gateway, you won't be able to get packets into your VPC to that public IP address. <clears throat> that's the first half of it. Once you get that working, if you try an SSH, it still won't work because your VPC doesn't know to route stuff back to the internet gateway for certain IP addresses. So if we go look at our route table, we have two routes. We have our first one, which just says, hey, and route tables, remember the first thing that it matches in destination, it, it actually exits the route table and goes to that target. So, uh, if, you're, if you had two EC2 instances and they were both 10.001 and 10.002 and they were talking to each other, a packet destined for 10.002 would hit this entry in the route table, bounce to local and actually be routed by internal routing mechanisms inside your VPC to your other EC2 instance and vice versa. <coughs> but when you are SSHing into your instance from the outside, you're trying to hit your public IP, it flows through the internet gateway to your EC2 instance. Your EC2 instance tries to send a reply, at, uh, reply back to your uh, modem's address. And in trying to send that reply, it will not match this 10.0.0.16. So we have to add another entry. It says if whatever doesn't match this, which is you know everything else basically, because if it didn't match this, it's gonna fall through. So we just say any IP address, target is your internet gateway that you've attached. So that's how the routing works. Okay, cool. <clears throat> any other questions? Now I have to remember where we left off. So let me pull up my, actually I'm gonna pull this over to here. No, actually that is a different browser. Tried to pull a Chrome tab into Firefox. That doesn't work. And of course now, after sleeping all day, my cat decides to wake up. Yeah, I'm talking about you, cat. Come on. You want to hang out here? No? All right. Fine. Uh, yes, so the last class's Zoom lecture, I did post it in box, but people were saying you did not have, or you were not able to, uh, yeah. Well, you know, funny thing, um, so before I get to that, uh, the last class was in box, People were saying you couldn't view the whole thing in box because you had to actually download it. And so that kind of sucked. So I tried to put it into uh, YouTube and that worked well. And then I realized that there was some, some information that I probably shouldn't have flashed on the screen. Some URLs and stuff for my other job that doesn't have any business being in 
this stream, so I tried to edit that five seconds out. And in editing that five seconds out, it basically broke YouTube's editor, so I tried that twice, broke it twice, and eventually re-uploaded the video like three different try times trying to get past a YouTube editor bug. Didn't work, had to download a offline open source editor. I forget which one I got, but it's like open edit or something like that. <clears throat> Use that to cut out, snip out the section I wanted to snip out, re-uploaded it, and that's what actually is up there now. So. Windows video editor, there's there's a thing for that now? Oh, well, I got an open source one. And and yeah, Nathan, uh, I actually wrote that uh, it's time to update your information thing. So anytime you see pop-ups on that gray and orange page, even though I don't work for Clemson anymore, that's, that's my fault. So you can curse my name whenever you get that. Yeah, yeah, I know. I did not do it willingly. <laughs> I always thought that login should be for logging people in and not for warning people of stuff, but eh, yeah. So you can find the YouTube playlist link uh, in Slack. I will be sharing stuff to that uh, whenever, whenever I finish this. So hopefully by this evening, the next one will be up. Uh, again, uploads kind of take forever. And let's see where we left off. So we got all of this stuff done. We were able to SSH in. Um, we found our IP address. We ch modded. Here's the ch mod command you were looking for. Um, and you just do 600. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And then we stopped when I was running these commands and then I rebooted. So. <clears throat> sudo apt update sudo lets you do stuff at, with root permissions apt is the package manager update just tells it to pull down all the latest packages for those of you unfamiliar with linux you don't just download as much as possible you don't just download random exes like you do in windows or to some extent um, mac os you actually have an integrated package man manager and that package manager knows about almost everything that you could ever want to put on your system for the most part. Um, so you just say, hey, go update your definition of all the things that are available and then upgrade. You should be doing this regularly. Uh, it's part of my notes um, at the beginning of every single project. How do you do this project? Well, first you wanna make sure that your system is up to date, that you're, you've gotten all the latest security patches, all the latest kernels, updates, and stuff like that. And then um, I also install Apache 2, which is uh, the first web server we're going to be dealing with. And you don't, after you install Apache 2, you don't need to reboot. But after an upgrade, if, you, if it patched your kernel, you do need to reboot. So I suggest update, upgrade, and reboot as your normal patching process. <clears throat> so let me see if I can get into my system. Where did my OBS window go? Okay, so let's switch back to this. And I'm in, all right. So I have already done sudo apt install Apache 2, I believe. Yep, Apache 2 is already the newest version, 2.4.29. So does anybody have any questions getting to this point, having Apache running on your system? <clears throat> I will take silence as consent on that one and move on. So uh, it's still trying to actually get to your system. <clears throat> Did you turn it off? And if you turned it off and back on, your IP address may have changed. Just a couple of things that I've done before. Speaking from experience. Um, but okay, so the Apache installs into a couple of places. Um, CD, Etsy, Apache 2. So inside Etsy Apache 2, Etsy is normally where you 
where uh, configuration files and stuff like that goes. Um, don't ask me why in, I mean, almost all of the stuff here is all of the old school directory like temp user, var, serve, sys, um, mount, lib, Etsy, dev, yeah, all that stuff. It's all, it's all three letter words, I don't know. Yes, I am using Windows, I'm using Windows subsystem for Linux. So this is actually a really tiny VM that Windows runs for me under the covers that gives me access to all my Windows stuff. So this is a virtualized Ubuntu home here. It's a full, fully featured bash shell. And I'm also running the tool Windows Terminal uh, which is this actual nice slick terminal instead of the older bash um, command prompt that looks like a CMD command. And if you look around, you can actually ls la win home, and it will tell me that, hey, it has mounted my C drive, and win home actually goes to out of this virtual OS and points to my real C drive. So if I tried to do this, slash, desktop it'll actually show me all the stuff on my desktop so that's cool <clears throat> you tried to put 10.0.0.16 as a cyber block it gave you an error um let me see what i did on mine because i oh okay that's not what i meant to do all right let me go back to browser and go look at my vpc I think 16, no, I have 16 in mine. It might be that, uh, yeah, 24 should work just fine. Um, I wonder if that's a difference in like AWS Educate doesn't allow you to probably like, or the AWS like lower level accounts maybe don't let you spin up as big of a VPC. Uh, 24 is fine because that still gives you uh, 255 addresses. So you can make a subnet that takes all that stuff up and that should be fine. So, by the way, if you guys don't know, one of the, could I put in Canvas or Slack how you are using Windows? If you just Google how to install WSL for Windows 10, that would be the thing that I did. And then after that, look for how to install Windows Terminal. Uh, <clears throat> can I use your default one? It isn't letting me use. And you're trying to create a VPC? Hmm. Is it giving you any specific errors? I'm actually just going to put these two things to Google for Windows subsystem for Linux in there. Non restricted range. Okay. Let's see what they say. You already have something that's created in your VPC, same VPC. Okay, so that's. Oh my God, cat. Yeah, I know. All right, so I have not seen that specific thing before. Um, you can use your default one if you want. I wonder if your default one already has that. I know. <coughs> okay, so we were doing terminal stuff. So we have the terminal back. Uh, my favorite key command, it's not really even a command, but my favorite thing to do in any Linux operating system, if you go look at your history, it will tell you all the things that you've typed before, which is pretty cool. But, uh, you, you know, having to select this and then paste it into your command prompt kind of sucks. If you hit control R and then start typing, say, SSH, it will put into your command prompt the most recent thing you've typed that has SSH in it. Control R stands for reverse 
search. So it's actually searching through your history and then you can hit left and right to edit it or you can just hit enter and it'll run it. It saves me so much time. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's all good there. Um, we were talking about Apache 2. So here you're going to find all of your configs. So different operating systems lay things out differently can, because Apache configs can work like 800 different ways. You just point certain config files at other config files. So if we look at there are sites available and sites enabled. So if we look at dash la sites available, we see that there are these two files, 000 default and default SSL. And they, these are what we call virtual hosts in these files. So if we do them, sites available, zero, we see this virtual host tag. It's gonna listen on all uh, NICs, all, all network cards that are attached to this operating system for any request coming in on port 80 and it's going to use a document root of var wwhtml. <clears throat> what that means is, is this the right one? Okay. So what that means is if you send something to http colon slash slash your ip slash index.html, this right here is the path, and I'll talk a little bit, um, I think one of the next lectures will be about URLs and, and how all that stuff is formed, but for now, everything after that slash, that is the path that it's going to use. So you could even do like folder slash index.html or folder slash my file dot mp3 or whatever. So if you had this in your path, it's going to take the document root that we saw, in that thing, which was document root var www.html. That's in the config file that we were just looking at. So it will take this as your root for your document and it will give you back through to your browser a file that exists at slash var www.html folder my file dot mp3. So this is how folder layouts work. You just put stuff, you specify what your document root is in the config and anything that you specify in the path, it's going to try and find for you. Uh, additionally, if you had, and that is a dish, like three, there's way too many T's in that HTTP. If you just ask for this, actually this, so let's say this is one, two, three, four, just to make it easier to read. So this part's your IP address, this part's the protocol it's gonna use, you could even put a port in here if you wanted to, like one, port one, two, three, but if you don't specify a port, it's going to use the default for your protocol. So the default port for HTTP is port 80. If you don't specify a port in this thing with a colon before that slash, it will use port 80. Anybody know what the default port is for HTTPS colon slash slash? 443, right, so. <clears throat> If I try to do HTTPS and then put 80 in here, <clears throat> it will send a connection to port 80. And then your browser will not like the answer it gets because it is not, port 80 on our web server is not doing SSL encryption or TLS encryption nowadays. Um, so your browser is going to get back something that's just like a plain text packet when it tried to send an SSL handshake and things are not gonna work right. But if you were to edit your config files in Apache to say, hey, on port 80, I want you to serve up an SSL encryption layer, then that would work. So that slight aside, um, regardless that whole thing, let's see if we can figure out, it's not in here. So there is a specific, it's probably in here, vim apache 2conf uh, index. Uh, yeah. Nope. Hmm. Conf available. I'm trying to figure, there's a place where you tell it what default, uh, what things to look for for default. So for example, if I don't specify a file in, <clears throat> at the end of this path, or even if I have a folder, 
with no file at the end, it will, Apache is smart enough to say, oh, well, you don't, I think it's called document index or something like that. Um, it's smart enough to say, oh, you didn't specify one. I'm going to look for an index.html and serve that up as the answer for this. It's called index.html because it is, originally it was the thing that if you go to this folder and you don't specify a file, it means you're looking for a directory index. You're looking to try and figure out what all is in this folder. You're looking for information about this folder itself, not about a specific file. And so it gives you back the index.html file or the index.htm file. And I think it supports like five different types of file extensions. So all that being said, I don't really remember where that is. I, in our uh, web server right now, we could Google it, but I don't care because I don't think it's on the quiz. And remember, you're allowed to Google anything on the quiz. I would rather you guys learn how to find information than actually memorize stuff. Although there are things that I think you should memorize, um, like, you know, var www HTML, because you're going to end up typing it so often it'll be useful to not have to Google that every 20 minutes. But var www HTML. Let's go take a look around at this. <coughs> so let's go back var. Inside var, there are a couple of things. The only two things for this class we really care about is the log directory and the www directory. Let's go to the www directory because it's simpler to look at. And there's nothing but HTML in there. I don't know why they made a var www HTML instead of just var HTML or something like that or putting it your whole document root in var www. Whatever, doesn't matter. This is the way the world works. We just get to live in it. So if we go look at var www.html. There's a single index.html. And if we look at that index.html with Vim or Pico or how we could even cat it if we want to, although that's not too useful. Um, let's do Vim. And we get nice syntax highlighting if you're using a decent editor. And that probably is not the easiest thing to see on your phone. So maybe I'll do this. Yeah, I assume some of you all are on your phone. Um, let's just do vi index.html. That still has syntax highlighting. Let's try less. I prefer to use, and you probably should prefer to code with syntax highlighting, but just for the sake of actually making this readable on the stream, uh, we're doing black and white with less here. So it's got a little doc type thing. It's got some HTML. It's got an HTML tag. So this is HTML is a subset of XML. It uses XML tags. With XML, a tag is cr started with this little I guess that's what less than sign and ends, well, it doesn't really end, but a tag uh, definition is closed with a greater than sign. Inside that, you have the tag name, which is always the first thing that goes in there, HTML in this case, and then you have attributes. So anything, key equal value, key equal value, separated by spaces. You can even just have a key with no value. You can have like, uh, you know, thingy in here just right at the end so if i copy this uh it doesn't really matter um and then here so notice at the end of this html there is not a slash at the end now if we look at this meta tag there is a slash at the end so when i say that this greater than sign closes your tag that's not really true it ends the definition of this specific tag but when you have a slash at the end it does close the tag it means there's no children inside this thing and this is this is also this is the beginning of the tag and the end of the tag more often you'll have a title tag or something like that and then you'll have some children inside of it like this text is a child of the title tag. And then when you're done specifying all the children, you close the title tag with a slash title. So if we go back and look at the very top, 
we haven't closed this in or this HTML tag and we won't till the very bottom. Here's the head tag and it's got a whole bunch of stuff in it. So if we scroll down, let's see how far this goes. And these are all CSS definitions, by the way. I'm not really gonna be teaching CSS. Uh, I'm gonna get you enough to get through. Um, but I mean, just making things look good is an entire class or multiple classes in and of itself. So black and white, some colored backgrounds, that's good enough for me. We're talking, we're teaching about page functionality here, not necessarily uh, <coughs> making things look good. Normally, unless you're working at a very, very small shop, you have graphic designers and page designers that are going to give you your CSS and all that stuff, and you just have to give them uh, HTML elements for them to attach that CSS and, and uh, stylings and stuff to it. So here's our head tag, and here we have a style tag, and this is defining a bunch of CSS. It's not even written in XML inside this style tag. Just like if we had a script tag here, we could put JavaScript directly inside of it. And it does not have to be XML syntax because inside here, this is CSS syntax for styles. So we go all the way down, and this is all one big CSS document, which I do not recommend, and will take points off if you do something like this, whether with styles or with JavaScript code, that stuff needs to be in separate files and included in your HTML, not embedded in your HTML. But this makes it easier for Apache to deploy in Ubuntu or whatever, so that's fine. Um, then we close the head tag. So this is the end of the style tag. That's the end of the CSS. This is the end of the head tag. And then we start the body tag. So your HTML document has two main children. It's got a head and it's got a body, just like the rest of you. Uh, and then inside your body, you got div tags, image tags, div stamps for dividers. That's gonna put like a new line break on the page and it's also going to hold stuff in it. And if we go look at, let's see, what's my, I, let me see if I can get my IP address real quick and let's see what this looks like in the browser. Hopefully port 80 will load in the browser, otherwise I'll feel silly. Okay, so. <coughs> Put that in, boom, Apache, it works. It says Apache 2 Ubuntu page. Inspecting elements with your browser by right clicking, this works in Chrome, probably works in Safari, but I don't own a Mac, so I can't tell you. Um, definitely works in Chrome, definitely works in Firefox. Inspecting pages and, uh, okay, well, that's cool. The browser does not actually have that window. Let me add a new window. Uh, what is this? Browser tools, find the new window. Eh. There. All right, so that actually is not too useful. I may as well just embed it in the window, huh? Okay, one second. How do I delete this thing? Delete it. Yes, this thing, embed, dock to bottom. There we go, now we can see everything. Okay, anybody have any questions so far? Am I going too slow, am I going too fast? Are you guys falling asleep on this beautiful Tuesday, Wednesday, weekday? Okay, Tuesday was a weekday, yeah, still awake, hump day, yeah, that's true, okay. So it looks like, taking a side tangent for a second, that um, we're going to get through enough of this for me to expect you all to have the first project done on Sunday. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. Uh, go slow. Yeah. Okay. Now you want me to go slower. God, I'm so hungry. Oh, my God. And I got to go to the grocery store after this. And I got to, like, mow the lawn and stuff. Oh, being a home homeowner's terrible. Um in class early. Yeah, so then y'all don't have the project due. Yeah, I see how that works. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, developer tools. You have this inspect thing. You can look at any web page. This is, anybody can read any of your web pages. What quiz? There will be a quiz at the end of class. I'm ending class at five, so we have 30 more minutes to get through this. 
and whatever I don't get through, you guys are going to be asking me questions about all weekend and probably mostly Sunday evening. So I'm trying to get through as much of this as possible. Thank you very much. Um, we have this body tag, and we have a div tag, and we can see here that this div tag is taking up the whole page, but it's got a yellow section and it's got a blue section. Um, the yellow section, if we look over here, it's got a margin on the left and right, <clears throat> and then it has no padding, and then the actual thing itself is the blue. That's the actual content of this div. I'll talk more about margin and padding very sparingly because it's annoying and it's all style properties and kind of a pain to get right. But when you look at stuff like this, you can kind of mouse over it and you can see it. You can also look at all of the different element details. So for example, if I turned off margin left auto, that deletes that CSS from the page and moves it back over. If I turn off margin right auto, it moves way over there. So you can actually edit your CSS in line here. You can type in new stuff. I can do, let me turn off margin left auto and instead, how do I, there we go, margin left colon 10 px. Okay, so that was a little something. Let's make it 20, yeah, 250 px. Okay, cool. And maybe I want 300 px. Awesome. So you can sit here and you can play with your website. You can make it kind of sort of look the way you want. And then once you get it looking the way you want, you can turn it in, right? You don't have to do anything else. No, because this just edits the page as you see it now. So if I click off of this, this, this is how the page looks. It is editing it in memory in your browser on your client, not on the server. So if you update it, it goes right back to the way it is. So you have to remember what changes you've made. And then you gotta go back over here to your server and you have to make those changes and put them in stone. <laughs> oh my God, I have, I have not done that, but also my parents got paper report cards because I'm old. So yeah, changing grades in middle school so your parents don't yell at you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I have edited websites to make to get into things because people are dumb like you know when they want you to show a coupon on your phone hey <laughs> hey yeah okay um so this is your index.html you guys are really good at distracting me this year i know right uh hacker man um and so you will need to edit this index.html file now for example let's say Let's just do this. Let's go Google, give me a uh, basic HTML5 document. So HTML5 has a really short and sweet syntax. I'm just gonna copy this real quick and let's go back over to Sublime and make sure syntax, uh, HTML syntax is turned on. And I'm going to save this. Where do I want to save this? I'm going to save this onto my desktop. I'm going to make a CPSC 3750 folder. And I'm going to save this as index.html. Okay, cool. So I have this thing. It's got a title. I'm going to call it my project one thing. And description. I'm gonna make this also totally my project one. And we don't really need author, don't care about a style sheet. Um, and for the first project, you are allowed to just put some inline stuff in here. So for example, uh, is the quiz due at the end of class? No, it's just available at the, it'll be available at about five and I think I have it open to like 6.30 or something like that. So um, you guys have time and yeah, it should be pretty easy. I think it's five multiple choice. No, you can't get the answer, but you can Google the answers. Um, I'm actually going to because maybe you guys disagree, but I think tabs are superior. Convert to tabs. There we go. Love tabs. 
Very good. All right, so I'm going to just get the path of this. Let's see, copy image location. I'm gonna make myself an image tag in here. Source equals this thing. All right, notice in your project one, you have to have an image that is being loaded from your desk or from your computer, from your actual instance, which means you have to put an image on there unless you wanna use this one and kind of cheat. That's, I mean, that is technically correct, which as they say in Futurama is the best kind of correct. So we're gonna get rid of, close this thing. Notice because I have good syntax highlighting, I have a nice little red thing here that's saying, hey, you have an open tag. And it's due until, oh, I'll mess with the quiz. Stop asking me about the quiz for five minutes. Um, I'm gonna put an H1 in here for a header. H1 is the biggest header. H5 is the smallest header, literally. I, that's how they named them instead of just header, but whatever. Uh, project one and there we go. And then down here, I guess, stop. Need an A tag for an anchor. So when people, when I say put a link on the page, when you include a style sheet, instead of doing style and then typing some CSS goes here, that's how you embed styles directly into your page. When you pull in a style sheet from elsewhere, it is a link tag and then you have a source. I think I'm kind of doing this part off the top of my head. It's not part of the project. I'm telling you what not to do. So you have this source tag. This is not what I mean by a link. This is what nobody means when they say they want a link, all right? When your boss comes to you and says, I want you to put a link on the page, he doesn't mean put a CSS link tag on the page. He means put one of those little blue underlined hyperlinky things on there, as your boss would probably say. Uh, href equals, and then link to www.google. So an A tag is your actual link. And when you click on it, it goes to the href. And if you wanna be super fancy, you can say target equals, I think blank, uh, HTML target blank. I gotta remember what the actual syntax, underscore blank, cause that's easy to remember. This, if you add this target equals blank attribute to your A tag, it will open this link in a new window. And then we say this is a, this is not a link tag slash a, yes, you have to close it. So this is the text that turns blue and is underscored and is clickable. This is where it's gonna go. This href is the URL that it's going to load. If you leave the target out, it will redirect your current tab to that target. If you leave target in, it will put it, it will actually create a new tab. Okay, so this is good enough. Let's take this and this is saved. So you may be tempted to just paste it in here and that'll work for this project. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about how to copy stuff to your computer. So if I open a new tab and in my text editor and it takes a while. Uh, where did I save this? Okay, so CD desktop, CPSC, LS, we have an index.html there. Awesome. Oh, uh, w, uh, W3 schools is the worst. Oh, it's so bad. It tells you like the one thing that noobs need to know and doesn't give you any context or like helpful hints don't use that, please use the Mozilla Developer Network because it actually tells you all the specifications. Coming from the change our information. Yeah, okay, all right, yes, fine, do whatever you want. I'm just saying, you know, you're not gonna get all the information unless you go look at the actual specs that Mozilla and other browsers have for you. Mozilla is actually pretty useful. Um, and, and I try to make questions on the quizzes and stuff that aren't, some sometimes aren't answerable, answerable in W3 schools, word of warning. Um, so I'm in this thing 
and I want to copy it to my web server. So I use the SCP command and I have to pass in my flag or my flag, my key file. Now you guys got me all flustered. Tilde slash keys. No, AWS, it's not in a key folder because I don't do it the same way everywhere apparently. Um, and then I'm going to need to, I'm copying from and to, so SCP, this is the, the way it's gonna authenticate. And then the next argument is the file I wanna copy. And then the argument after that is where I wanna copy it to. So what I wanna copy is index.html. And what I wanna copy it to is Ubuntu at my IP address, which should be in the browser. So I'm, uh, there, nope, not the whole thing with HTTP, thank you very much. And then colon, wherever you wanna put it on the file system. So. We want it to go in var www.html and we put a dot at the end. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so it doesn't line wrap. And so slash dot, this dot at the end, this dot at the end means name it the exact same thing that it's named here over there. I could also type out index.html, but it's so much easier to just say dot and try and do that. This is not going to work. Oh yeah, it gets way easier with time, especially once you have an SCP command and then you can just like control R it and just like do whatever you want. And you can also put a dash R in your SCP command to like copy whole things. Um, so this is not going to work. Connection closed. Why is connection closed? Is that actually my IP address? Yeah. Ubuntu at, okay. That is not the error I was expe I was expecting an error, but that's not the error I was expecting. So let's try and put this in total days. Oh, ah, Ubuntu. Yeah, okay. So none of us are perfect. Far www h. How many w's is that? Three. HTML slash dot. This is the error I was expecting. Var www.html is a directory that you have to write to as root. You cannot write to it as Ubuntu. So you have to put your file in your home directory, which can either be slash home slash Ubuntu slash dot, or shorthand for your home directory is just tilde slash dot. That will put it in your home directory. If I do ls tilde slash dot back on my web server, we see that we have our index.html and it's got all of our cool stuff in there. Awesome. Now, there's two different things we can do. We can say, uh, we can just copy it over and this will probably be what you guys do because it's, it's simpler but it, you just have to do it every single time. So cp tilde slash index. And remember I'm running these commands on my server now. I've copied the file to my server now I have to move it around on my server index.html, and I wanna put it dot, which is my current thing. I wanna put it exactly where I am, I am with the name that it currently has. Hey, it still doesn't work. It doesn't work because, like I said, you need to have root permissions. You need to type sudo in front of things. Sudo means super user do. So you're saying, hey, super user, do this for me. And it, tell, it gets root to run everything you type after that as its own command. So now we do an ls and we have this index.html and if we cat this one, we have our website and let's see how it looks here. Yay, it looks terrible, but it's there. All right, and if I click on this, it opens a new tab, but apparently I did not write, yeah, okay. Let's vim index.html. Oh, terminal blocking it. One sec, well, okay, okay, fine. Browser. So it looks awesome. And I click this tag and it takes me to my IP address slash www.google.com. That is not ideal. That is not something I would give you full marks for. I mean, I think the link tag's only, the A tag, excuse me, it's only worth like five points anyway. So you might get two points for that. You put a link on there, but it doesn't work. What we need to do is we need to put H T no 
I can't edit this because I didn't run it as sudo. Yes, it is as annoying and tedious as you may think. HTT, no, I to edit HTTPS colon slash slash google.com. And now we go back and we refresh the page and we click on it and huzzah it opens a new tab to HTTPS google.com. So we got about 10 minutes left. Let me switch back to this so you can see what I did. I did sudo vim index and I put HTTPS on the front of google.com. And if you don't do that, it your browser, when it tries to go to any string that doesn't have slashes at the front, uh, yes, you could upload a blank or you could just, for example, rm and sudo gotta remember sudo rm index.html and sudo vim index.html and you could write it here in fact you could just hit i and let's see if this works okay so that kind of worked but notice how your indent my indentation here is pretty shitty and it's pretty shitty because we didn't tell vim that we wanted to preserve things for pasting. So I'm gonna hit colon and type set paste. I'm gonna hit enter and then hit I. And now it's in insert paste mode. And if I copy and paste again, look, it preserved all of my stuff. That's awesome. So I hit escape to drop out of paste mode, control X, lowercase X. It's the same thing as WQ. So uh, colon W is right, colon Q is quit colon wq writes your file out and quits lowercase x does the exact same thing don't use uppercase x i did that when i was in a freshman lab once and uppercase x encrypts your file don't do that you're gonna have a bad time uh so we have this index file we just pasted it instead and it looks exactly the same except this is probably broken because I didn't fix it on my side. I only fixed it on the server side. So when I pasted it in, I pasted in the broken thing again. So let me switch back to browser. It looks good. I click this link. Hey, what do you know? That URL for, is not available. And that is because when I pasted it in, I pasted it from my Sublime where I did not actually fix this for HTTPS colon slash slash. So if you edit stuff on your server, you kind of need to remember to go back and edit it in your own files. And uh, eventually, it's going to get kind of unwieldy, in my opinion, to do all this stuff on your server. You're going to have like maybe 10 files, and some of them are going to be hundreds of lines long. And it'll be really nice to actually have a mouse and an editor and all that stuff available to you and be able to write code here and then just upload it when you're ready. Um, but do what you do, it doesn't really matter. There's one extra trick while I got eight more minutes. I'm going to, let's see, cd tilde. And from my home directory, my home directory is, let's switch back to this. Okay, my home directory, I did cd tilde. I did pwd, which means print working directory. And that tells me that I'm currently in home Ubuntu, even though I cd to tilde and the path right here that it's showing me is tilde. That's because tilde is short for home slash whatever username you're logged into, which here is Ubuntu. Now, I'm gonna make a project one folder and I'm going to CP my, and I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna re-upload my file. And instead of doing it here, I'm gonna upload it to project one slash dot if I can spell project right. Okay, no, uh, yep. What did I call it? Project, of course, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's just R RF project make their project one and let's go back over here and upload our file instead of just to our home ubuntu we're going to upload it to our project directory if i do ls project we see this awesome 
what's the point of doing that? Well, now I have things you know lined up in projects, but also I can make a project folder here. So I'm going to make a sim link. This is like a shortcut in Windows project now. Yeah, she is totally sleeping over here now. Uh, I'm going to make a sim link. This is like Windows uh, shortcuts, but your whole operating system knows how to follow these things. So sudo ln to make a sim link, dash s for it to be a sim link instead of a hard link. So ln is a link, dash s is sim link. Where do I want the link to come from? Tilde slash uh project one slash and i want it to go to here dot with the same name if i do ls we see we have a project one folder if i do ls dash la to see the specifics we see that project one folder now points to home ubuntu project one what this means is I don't have to do this final step of copying stuff from my home folder to var www.html. It will just show up. So I did not copy the project one index.html to our var www folder, but if I go over to my browser and I go to slash project one, we get this file. So if you want to not have to do this sudo cp from your home directory every time you change a file because you have to scp it to your home directory and then you have to get on the box and cp it around to the var www thing with sudo if you don't want to have to deal with that you can do this ln s command to set yourself up a sim link and then things will just show up i don't mind if the url you give me has project one in it. I don't mind if you, if it's like your IP address slash project one slash project two slash this is my freaking project one HTML file dot HTML. I don't care. You just got to give me a URL for this project and it has to work and it has to have uh, a title. So the title here, my project one thing came from the title tag in Sublime, which is here, my project one thing this description this is used for search engines it doesn't i don't think show up it might show up in like your browser history if you try to figure out what you visited but otherwise it does not uh h1 tag project one that h1 tag is actually you know what let's just inspect this page so i don't have to hop back and forth how about that all right so here's the head it's got this title project one thing. It's got meta name, da, 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 da. it's got a body tag. It's got an H1 that is project one. That's this blue thing that we're outlining here. It's got an image. That image has a source, which is loading from my IP address. And then it's got an A tag, which links to something. And if, it, if, the, if I click on this link and it doesn't go somewhere, you're gonna get two out of five points on that or something. Um, the one thing I haven't done is I have not set a background color. I believe that, let's see, courses, let's see if I can rem remember if that's all the stuff. Come on, come on, uh, project one. All right, so EC2 instance, we have set up our EC2 instance. HTML file, uh, honestly, I'm gonna edit this because I don't care about this path. Uh, host an HTML file, I don't care about the path. You can make the path whatever you want. Uh, you can, yes, leave your instance running um, until I grade it, but I will send you a uh, message as soon as it's graded through Slack with your score and tell you that you're free to turn it off if you want. I'm trying to be nice about that stuff. So, uh, also free tier eligible. I don't think uses that stuff. I don't think free tier eligible uses. Let's see, T2 micro free tier eligible. What does this mean? Uh, in 750 hours each month for one year. To stay within free tier, only use, yeah, okay. So yes, you will start having to pay for it. And that's why I said, I mean, worst case, even if you have to pay for this T2 micro thing, uh, 
even if you've used up all of your first free tier eligible stuff and you have to start paying for T2 micros, they're pretty cheap. That's, I mean, your entire AWS account for this entire course, even if you leave things running, uh, it's going to cost you less than a normal book that you buy at the bookstore. So that's kind of why I don't assign books. Also because you should be Googling stuff. Uh, Alex, you're going to have to send me an email and I will add your email address. Normally I add people's at clemson.edu email address. You should have received uh, an email in your at clemson.email address from Slack inviting you to our instance. If you can't find it or you want to use a different email address, drop me an email, tell me what you want to use and I'll send out an invite to that. Um, so real quick, uh, title tag, we've gone over that. Anchor tag, yes, we've gone over that. Uh, at least I didn't call it a link tag this time. Image tag, yes, we have one of those. Reference an image that is hosted elsewhere on the same web server, so we saw that. Background color, you should Google this. Make sure it's not white. Uh, Slack name and picture, I want you to log into Slack. I want you to set up a picture. It, doesn't don't care what your picture is as long as it's not my picture and I want you to set up an actual name in slack that you would like me to use um, other than that that's the entire project it is due on Sunday and that edit did not actually take place did it uh, this thing here get rid of that update and update and there we go That join may or may not work, I'm not sure. Oh, okay, well somebody just joined with a huge long random name, so awesome. Uh, ugh. All right, uh huh. Any other questions before we get to the quiz? Anybody? All right. Let's go look at our assignments. Where are we? Home. And if I go look at this quiz, the access code has been changed to crap and it should be available now. I changed it to crap because I showed you the access code earlier and it was teal. So, capital C crap, you should be able to log in and take the quiz. I'm just gonna hang out here till 5.15. Let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully I covered everything. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing and make sure that I covered everything real quick. And then I might share again if I feel like uh, there's some questions in there that aren't fair because I didn't get to them. One second. Actually, yeah, I think I covered everything. So awesome. Um Drop me your IP address and stuff in the general channel in Slack, Nick, and I'll take a look. It could be that your security group is not allowing port 80 through to your IP address. So check your security group for your EC2 instance. The thing that we put the SSH stuff in there, make sure you have a port 80 or HTTP port as well.
<laughs> yeah, she's a talker. She'll just, especially in the morning, she's just like, ow, ow, ow. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. My last cat was not near as loud. So it's nice to have somebody that's somebody. Nice to have a pet that can tell me what she wants. Yeah, I got her about a week and a half ago. I think I got her like, I guess two weeks ago. Adopted her from Oconee County. Yeah. The anchor tag is that a tag thing, uh, not the link, but the slash a with the href. Uh, well, you can't have two files named the same thing in the same directory, so your second index file would overwrite your first one. If one of them was uppercase, because I because Linux cares about case on its file system, so if you did capital I index, you'd have to actually type in capital I index. Uh, you can have multiple files, though, that are not index files. You can have image files and CSS files. You can name it project1.html. That would all work fine. You could have all of them sitting next to each other, and you would just have to type your path in. Yep, class is over. If you're done with the quiz, I'm just going to hang out here for questions for another seven minutes and uh, I'll be on Slack. Not too much, but you know, after I get done with chores. So see y'all Monday. We will talk about React as a JavaScript framework, but I'm not going to teach jQuery or Dojo or anything like that. Um, those are kind of last generation. Um, Vue.js and stuff like and React are the new newer generation, and so I chose React over the other ones. But uh, just like Dojo is kind of like jQuery, uh, I think Backbone JS and Vue and stuff like that are kind of like React, and they have a lot of similarities in that regard. So we're doing React, and we'll also do a lot with Node.js, which isn't really a JS framework, but it's using JavaScript on the server side. But before we get to play with all that, we have to 
do it all ourselves. So the first couple of projects will be vanilla, uh, vanilla JavaScript. No problem. Thanks, Max. I'm glad you guys enjoy it. See you Monday. As soon as I get done with all this yard work, I'm going to have a great afternoon. All right, y'all, you got four more minutes before I'm dipping out of this Zoom session. Y'all got any more questions? Speak now or forever till Monday, hold your peace.
All right. I'm out. Y'all have a good one.